Operationalizing flexibility is one of the stickiest bits of this proposal. It's not easy to distinguish what counts as a flexible response from one that is simply, you know, appropriate for the current situation. Uh, and so, um, you know, I think there is some interesting research going on, particularly with respect to animal consciousness in terms of doing that work of figuring out exactly what uh, flexible behavior is in contrast to these other uh, options. Uh, but there's pretty widespread, widespread agreement that what consciousness conscious responses involve is something more than reflex response and something less than fully self-conscious introspective deliberation. So we've got some sort of middle ground that conscious responses are important for and, uh, and I think flexibility, figuring out uh, what flexible, flexible responses are, is that is going to satisfy that middle ground. So what are the consequences for our two theories. Uh, first is that recurrent processing is not sufficient for consciousness. Uh, there's going to be some intermediate level of integration that's required in order to have a single unified representation. So, you know, you're having at this moment not just visual uh, representations, but visual representations and auditory representations and conceptual representations. They're unified. And so local uh, recurrent processing is going to be insufficient for accounting for that global uh, global conscious state. Um, representations across the brain are going to be important to be integrated into your phenomenal conscious representation. But access consciousness is not necessary for phenomenal consciousness. Uh, a conscious representation occurs prior to selection into working memory, on my view, uh, so contents are not limited to one or a few items that you could be conscious of a lot of stuff. Exactly how much stuff? Uh, that's still a matter of debate. Um, there's one view that uh, the, the kind of more global representation that you have is more of a gist than a detailed a uh, rich representation, and I think that's an interesting proposal. Uh, m further research is needed to kind of arbitrate exactly where, how rich your phenomenal consciousness is, uh, but I believe it is not spare. And also frontal and parietal areas are not necessary for consciousness, uh, that um, particularly bottom-up uh, processes can be integrated into a representation of the present moment without are the, necess the necessity of access without the necessity of frontal and parietal areas. But I think um, they may be uh, part of the normal mechanism for integration uh, because I think attentional selection is really important to selecting the sort of representations that are the best to represent the present moment. And so if attentional selection is normally part of what constitutes or what determines a conscious representation, then the frontal and parietal areas, which are important to attentional selection in a human, will be involved in conscious representation. So it's not surprising that we have a, a large overlap between frontal and parietal processing and evidence of conscious experience. And so finally, the upshot is that phenomenal consciousness is the primary target of explanation for a theory that seeks to solve the hard problem. So this is what it's like, and this is uh, uh, what we're trying to explain. Um, what it's like to have an experience is to represent the present moment. That what it's like for you now is what it's like for you now. That now is a key part of our description of what our phenomenal consciousness is like. Um, so conscious representations are both rich and global. And to give you a better definition of consciousness, one that's even more specific and, and clear, as philosophers like to do, I would argue that phenomenal consciousness is a representation of the present moment, which is an integrated multimodal selection of sensory and conceptual representations that best represents what is happening now relative to goals. So that includes a couple of other elements that I didn't talk about in this talk. Uh, you can find further discussion of 
what my theory is about a representation of the present moment and how it is essential to consciousness and how um, we can think about it as the product of an evolutionary process in terms of thinking about why is it that we need consciousness for flexibility? How does that connect um, in terms of solving the hard problem of consciousness? You can find all that uh, in my book, Evolution of Consciousness, and um, in other videos that will appear on this YouTube channel. Thanks very much.